Windows Admin Center Virtualization Mode is a new tool in preview to manage your organization's Hyper-V based virtualization fabric, which includes virtualization servers, virtual network infrastructure, and storage area networks. In this video, I'll show you how to install Windows Admin Center Virtualization Mode, create a resource group, add a Hyper-V host, and deploy a virtual machine. The current version of virtualization mode requires the Windows Admin Center virtualization mode host and the Hyper-V fabric it manages to be members of the same Active Directory domain. Windows Admin Center virtualization mode can't be installed side by side with a traditional Windows Admin Center deployment and requires a Windows Server host. You also can't deploy Windows Admin Center virtualization mode on a Hyper-V server that you want to use it to manage though you can deploy it on a VM running on that server. The Windows Admin Center virtualization mode host should have about 8 gig of RAM. To install on a Windows Server 25 host, we need to install the C++ redistributable. You can do that from Winget. Here I search for VC Redis to determine the name we want. And here I choose 2015 to 2022. I copy the name and use Winget to install it. Now I've downloaded the Windows Admin Center Virtualization Mode binary from the Windows Insider Preview website to a local folder. The address of this is located in the description. I double click on that, I click yes in user account control. I get welcome to the Windows Admin Center Setup Wizard that looks pretty much the same as the traditional Windows Admin Center Setup Wizard. I accept the license agreement. I choose here Express Setup. I'm asked to select a TLS certificate. In my labs, I always deploy an Active Directory Certificate Services Enterprise Root CA and then use that to distribute TLS certificates so every host in my domain trusts those TLS certificates. This saves the hassle of trust with self-signed certificates. I select the thumbprint and I select the next element, which is new to Windows Admin Center, which is the addition of a Postgres SQL database. Postgres is going to store all of the configuration information and all of the state information for Windows Admin Center virtualization mode. All I need to do is provide a password for the database account that's going to be used by Windows Admin Center virtualization mode. Here, provide a complex password. Specify how Windows Admin Center is to be updated. Choose your diagnostic data options. Click install and it goes off and installs Windows Admin Center, including the Windows Admin Center web server and that Postgres database. I click finish, I start Windows Admin Center. I provide my domain credentials, in this case, zavaops slash prime, and I put in my domain password and then select sign in. And this gives us a brand new Windows Admin Center virtualization mode interface. As you can see, this is quite different to the traditional Windows Admin Center UI. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a resource group. A resource group is a way of organizing my Hyper-V servers. In this demo, I'll add one resource group and a server to that resource group. But Windows Admin Center virtualization mode is designed for the management of thousands of Hyper-V servers, if you have that many, and the fabric that they interact with. I click Create Resource Group. I provide it with a name. In this case, I'm calling it Zava Nested Vert because these are just my nested virtualization servers. I click on the ellipsis and then I click add resource on the add resource page. I select what kind of resource I want to add. In this case, I choose between compute and storage. All I'm doing here is adding a pre-configured standard Hyper-V server, so I select compute. I'm then asked to provide the server name in fully qualified domain name format. So I have Zava hva.zavaops.internal. That resolves the server. To make it be able to be added to WAC virtualization mode, you need to open up the file and printer sharing port on the Hyper-V server to the Windows Admin Center virtualization mode host, just when you're joining it to the management tool. I select add and I choose next. On the networking node, you need to select a network template. Now what this is asking is for me to say which functionality that is compute, network, and storage, should be assigned to each specific network adapter. In my case, this Hyper-V host has only got one network adapter, so I'm selecting the compute, management, and storage, and choosing all of that functionality to be associated with the ethernet adapter. You have to assign all of these three functionalities across whatever network adapters are present on the Hyper-V host before you can proceed. 
On the storage page, use the drop down to select what kind of storage is this Hyper-V host going to use. In this case, I'm saying I'm using the existing storage, but if I wanted it to be configured with SAN storage, or if I wanted to use file server storage, which is a coming functionality, I could choose to do that. On the compute properties, I choose if I want to enable enhanced session mode, how many concurrent migrations, and what is the default virtual machine storage path. I'm happy with these defaults, so I click Next, and then I click Submit, and it goes and adds this existing Hyper-V virtualization host to my Windows Admin Center virtualization mode resource group. Now that I've got my virtualization host added to my resource group, I can do something with it. When I connect, there's a stripped down version of the normal Windows Admin Center. I can see information about the virtualization host listed here. I can look at the event log. I can configure the firewall, I can manage networks, I can manage storage. I can do Windows Update, but the thing I'm interested in here is virtual machines. I select the virtual machines node, I use the add button, I give my new VM a name, calling it WS25Temp. I'm assigning my virtual processes to the default of two. I can enable nested virtualization on this VM if I want. I select which virtual switch the VM is connected to, I click create, I can then Mac an ISO or connect to Sysprec VHD to complete the operating system setup process. Now I haven't gone into any particular detail here, but will do so in future videos. What I've shown you is the process of deploying Windows Admin Center virtualization mode, adding a virtualization host, and then deploying a virtual machine on that virtualization host. Check the documentation linked in the description for how you get Windows Admin Center virtualization mode and how to install and configure it. Remember, it's all in preview, but expect it to evolve rapidly to become your primary Hyper-V virtualization fabric management tool if you are responsible for Hyper-V or migrating to it from another virtualization solution.